Picking a framework has never been more exciting, but it's also never been harder. The options keep getting better every day, and as a result, it's a challenge to decide, and it's easy to feel like you're picking wrong. We should talk a bit more about how to decide what framework is best for the projects you're working on, and most importantly, what frameworks you should be using and taking advantage of in 2023. So let's get to it. The first most important question to ask when you're picking a framework is, what are you building? Generally, I find a lot of the questions I get are people not necessarily asking what the best solution to their problem is. It's more, should I learn this thing? Because they assume somehow that learning the right set of things is going to magically get them hired or help them be better as a dev. While I do think learning problems in different angles and through different lenses of things like different languages and frameworks does help you improve as a developer. I think understanding what solutions are best for and applying the best solution to the job tends to help even more. And as such, my recommendations almost always to pick a problem you wanna solve and start from there and work backwards from that problem based on what you know and what you wanna learn. With all that said, let's look at some problems and the best solutions for them based on the needs of those specific problems. Let's talk about how to pick a framework. I wanna be clear, we are specifically focusing on web frameworks here and web, web adjacent development things. When I refer to a framework, I'm referring to things that are used to build applications and websites that users go to and experience and aren't necessarily technical. So this is where the first question I usually ask is, site or app, what are you building? Is the thing you're building a website or an app? The way I like to distinguish between site and app is based on how users interact with the site. I used to think about this in terms of how much time a user spent on a page and was largely basing my decisions on what the average page session time was. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that the site you're watching this on right now, YouTube, or maybe Twitch for some of you, the site that y'all are watching this on right now is mostly static in link-based interactions. Obviously, if you're chatting, you're sending more messages, but generally speaking, you spend a lot of time on one page and most of the content for that page is mostly static. And as such, I'd actually put stuff like YouTube under this site category, whereas an app would be something more like Tang, more like Figma, where the time you're spending in the app is interacting with things that aren't links, where if you click something, it doesn't go to a different URL. Rather, when you click something, it does something within the context of that page. And it's that level of interactivity that I use to define my distinction between a site and an app. Generally, most things fall pretty well under sites, but there are a lot of developers working on apps. And I would argue that the apps tend to have much larger numbers of developers working on them, which is why there's so much effort going into improving the developer experience for application developers. Generally though, I think most people can sit down, look at this distinction and know what they are building. And from there, making good decisions becomes way easier. If you're building a website, the next step is to figure out what the most minimal solution that solves your problem is. Generally, people like to reach for these really big, bloated, all-in-one solutions because they want to make a decision that solves all of their problems at once. And I don't think that's the best way to decide on a framework or a solution to a problem you're building for. So if, in my case, I want a static website that just has my like basic information on it, and I already know some HTML, one of the best starting places is static HTML site. No shame at all. From here, there's two things that could happen, which are, but I need X. X being some specific like interaction or library or tool that you like or prefer. Let's say the static HTML site, you want it to update on every view to indicate how many views it has. You could embed that into the static HTML site or you can start looking into other solutions. One better example that I know I've run into is I start with a static HTML site and then I realize I want somewhat annoying integration that provides me a win as a developer. A really common one for me, but I want Tailwind. Thankfully, there are now tools that allow me to do something that feels like static HTML for the most part, but isn't. I'm sure y'all can guess what it's gonna be. Astro. The beauty of Astro is it's very minimal by default, and you type it with their CLI Astro add a specific thing like Tailwind, and they'll do the integration for you and provide a great developer experience while providing that. There are lots of other solutions in this general space. There is 11T, I'll say 
one of the things 11T is really good at is scaling and being fast developer experience when you have a shitload of stuff in it. So 11T is a great solution if that's where you're at. If you really hate JavaScript and HTML, Hugo, surprisingly decent, but I really like going. So from here, there's a lot of awesome opportunities and paths, and there are other frameworks that are pretty good for static sites, but generally a lot of the cool things we're going to be talking about are more on the app side. But once you start here and you've decided the thing you're building is a site or an app, start simple. And when you run into problems because of the simplicity or because of this very simple minimal solution, that's when it makes sense to start branching out and adopting these bigger, heavier, more dedicated solutions. But what if you go the app route? What if you're in that small percentage of sites that represent a large percentage of developers, especially those who are being hired and making money? Where is the starting point here? I would argue there's a lot of different ones and the best starting point depends a lot on your experience and goals. I would say the default still to this day for good reason is React. I would highly recommend in this case as like the default, use React with Vite. The reason I'm recommending React with Vite as the default point for a new application is simply because of the universality of React, the support that everything has for it, the quality of the documentation, the quality of the community, the quality of the developer experience. Generally speaking, React is the easiest bet to make unless you have specific problems or the desire to use something else. So given that I'm building an app and I want the simplest possible solution for building an app, React with Vite is probably a really good starting point. So if you need better performance, we have to first ask a question of how much do you like React? <laughs> Your goal is to improve performance and you like React a lot. I think Solid.js is a phenomenal option. Winner of the T3 award for framework of the year. I'm really excited about Solid. We're going to go a bit into Solid Start soon, but for now, I want to start with just this app focused angle. The third option here, which is, I hate it, which is more and more common every day. At that point, I'd probably recommend SvelteKit, uh, regardless of like what you're building with Svelte, just because it's the, the most supported way to Svelte right now. From here, if you're building an app and your performance is not where you want it to be using React, or you know it's going to be an app that has a lot of interactivity, that is the point where it makes a lot of sense to break out into different solutions. There are other reasons why you should leave React with Vite. I need SSR. There's a lot of reasons you would need SSR. I was considering putting them in here. SEO is a really big one so that you can have your content be indexed better and rank higher in searches and also be like indexable, have it come up automatically when you like post a link on Twitter. Metadata in the HTML is super important and frameworks that include SSR are very valuable for that. It's also the need for having some content on the page before the JavaScript loads for users who are in places where their internet isn't as good. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to have SSR and there's a lot of really good solutions for that that we'll get to in a bit because there is another option or another reason here why you might want to use something else, which is my team isn't all native English speakers. <laughs> something that I think we take a little for granted in the US and in general in software, especially people who are watching here, is the ability to speak and understand English really well. The React docs suck in other languages right now because the docs on reactjs.org are really rough. These docs are translated well as of somewhat recently, but they're not great. The new beta docs are absolutely phenomenal, but the translation effort hasn't started yet because they're not done. So picking up on and learning React right now if English isn't your native tongue, kind of sucks because, I mean, I'll just be frank here. Vue, Vue absolutely killed it with the internationalization and general world community building with the work that they did in their documentation community and framework overall. There is no more compelling reason to take a look at and potentially even move over to Vue than not wanting to be deep in the English speaking American like bubble for React. I do want to just on a quick tangent here, quality of docs arbitrarily ranked by Theo. This is super subjective based 
purely on my experience, but I hope this is helpful for people in like the things that they're learning and doing. I would say that the quality of the current React docs, like a four out of 10, current view docs, admittedly not too much experience. This is just from what I know, looking into it and talking with some friends. I'd say it's about an eight out of 10. Very, very good. Especially considering they've been there for a while. Beta React docs are like straight up 10 out of 10. They fucking killed it. Raised my bar for how to do documentation. However, English only for now. When this changes, if the community starts moving over as well, I'll be really hyped. But generally speaking, in Eastern countries and like non-native English speaking countries, Vue has been and will likely continue to do much better. And there are lots of jobs in those countries as well. So this is why I don't use Vue much. So I am a native English speaker. I can take advantage of all the cool things happening in the React community. And generally speaking, there isn't as much innovation in the Vue community. Thankfully, Evan Yu has been great about with things like Vite expanding that win to affect developers well outside of Vue. As you see here, I am recommending Vite, which is created by the creator of Vue as my default solution. But if React isn't your thing and you aren't necessarily like all in on frameworks made by English speakers in America, Vue is a good option. But that's that's the Vue tangent. There's a lot of paths you can go down here with Nuxt and all sorts of other things in the Vue ecosystem, even using Astro with Vue. I don't know anything about those. I don't use Vue. Go find a Vue creator. Talk about those things. I will not be going into this path any further because we have SSR to talk about. The next question I would ask once you've decided you need SSR is how much interactivity do you need with the SSR? If your answer is just a bit, how much do the interactive bits interact? And then a lot. And here is where I will plug next with create t3 app still firmly believe the best developer experience you'll ever have with next.js is create t3 app and i do highly recommend checking out if you haven't create t3.gg if you're building an interactive app that needs ssr actually i'm gonna do one other thing i need an api i actually really like this well i did it i finished the diagram added a bunch of logos, tidied it up a bunch, nothing y'all need to see here. I'd like to remind y'all that the goal here wasn't to tell you what framework to use so much as help you understand where each of these framework strengths are and what they were designed to do and the problems that they solve best. That doesn't mean you can't use one framework for things that this path doesn't point to. It just means these are the strengths of each framework and the intent of the designers in how they were made and used. Generally speaking, you can use almost any of these for almost any of these problems. There are definitely combinations I wouldn't recommend. That said, go at it, play with different technologies, use this chart to have a better understanding of the frameworks that you're looking at and to feel better about the decision you make, not to guide you to the perfect solution. I hope this was helpful. I appreciate y'all for watching this. I just tweeted the full size diagram out on Twitter. I'll have a link in the description for that if you wanna see that there in its full glory and share it around and whatnot. Huge shout out to Flip for this edit and also letting me know that we need a new outro clip. So uh, sorry about the shirt change and I'm busy, okay? YouTube seems to think you're going to like the video that's in the corner right here. I think it's a pretty good one. I, they wouldn't recommend it there if it wasn't. So give that a watch if you haven't yet. Super appreciate y'all for making it this far through. If you haven't subbed for some reason, come on. Sub thing should be right there as well. Thank you all. Peace, nerds.